have my little hand warmers here that I recommend to everyone. These are hot hands. Hand warmers keeps your hands nice and warm. So today I want to talk a little about arm weight transfer and how that factors into playing legato and staccato in different dynamic levels. And you know there's different kinds of staccato, but I'm going to boil it down to very fundamental basic staccato, and I'll show you what I do for so-called different kinds of staccato. Um, one thing you want to do for weight transfer, this really helps, is if you take both your arms and you do this little push-ups, upper push-ups. This would be upper body push-up. And the only way you could feel your upper body is if you don't hold on to your arms and pull them that way or you not take here. But you want to feel the whole arm as an uninterrupted network of energy that is just doing a, you know, a, uh, a push-up. Now you don't want to pull your uh, shoulders up. You're relaxing basically from your hands to your wrists, through your elbows to the shoulders, which are not, uh, they're all relaxed. The shoulders are not going to be pulled up. You know, you got to be careful with the shoulders. Now, right now, I would say I have maximum arm weight into my hands. Maximum. Now, if I want less arm weight, I'm going to think that I'm lighter coming down the shoulders to the elbows to the wrists. I'm just going to think lighter. Now, I could easily do that. I'm just not as heavy doing this. It's not a full-fledged upper body push-up anymore, but it's just, you know, half weight. Now, the other thing you could practice doing is take um, a scarf and hold it up as a sling and make believe this is, you know, the sling. It's I'm all hanging off the sling. You want to make sure you let go of everything and let your arm drop. That shows you that you're not holding on basically to any part of your arm. You have your wrists hanging off your arms. Your arms are relaxed. It's just dead weight arms and you let that go. Now you could take a sling with a scarf and you can do that for yourself each hand and make sure, you know, when you let, let go of the sling and you pull it apart that you're not like holding your hand there but it's just and your arm is just falling down and that's very important that just sort of like you're a Muppet it's like you're a marionette you're just hanging there that's so important so now if we talk about applying that arm weight the first arm weight the very maximum arm weight which was this this upper body push-up and I take a, a simple scale, and I say the simple scale would be F sharp major because it's a pattern scale. And I do some clustering, such as blocking out the triple blacks to the doubles to the triples to the doubles. That's symmetrical fingering, 4, 3, 2, 2, 3, 4 for the triple blacks, 3, 2, 2, 3 for the double, and the thumbs will be B and E sharp. I can lean right into those black notes with my complete arm weight. Just sensation of this. I'm doing it now. I'm doing a little upper body push-ups on the blacks. That's the most important. That tells me, you know, I'm not pulling back. I'm just letting the whole, the whole arm with the relaxed shoulders, dead weight, go right into those keys. And that's very important. Then I can do things like this. I can take that cluster and roll over it like this with the same arm weight as if I have it. And now I'm unraveling it. So. It's arm weight. Now if I don't want to play that much of a forte, which is the maximum arm weight, I say, okay, less arm weight, less arm weight, less arm weight, less arm weight. Less arm weight. So it's less dynamic. Now, make sure you're not stiffening up your wrist. It looks like my wrist is stiff, but it is not. When I do this, there's still some pliancy. You have to have some pliancy. Okay? I'm just showing you the pliancy is there. You're not going down here. You're not going up here. But you're playing with the basic types of arm weight. Lifting off maybe half weight and then maximum, as I showed you when I did the little upper body push-up. Okay, now I'm going to do unravel it, but first I'm going to do this. This is half arm weight. Half arm weight. Now I want to 
center my fingers on these two. Now, I'm hanging hand. It's a hanging hand. It's nothing like a cubed hand. It's a hanging hand. Okay, now I'm going to unravel that with the half weight. I get this. Stay close. And you can go backward. Remember, hanging hands. Always test that you have hanging hands. You're not tightening your hand. And you can do something like this. Maximum weight, light weight. Maximum weight, light weight. Maximum weight, light weight. Push. Light. Push. Light. Push. Light. Push. You can do this too. You can do a little push-up. Just to check. Right. Essentially, the fingers aren't playing the forte. You're channeling the arm weight down into pliant wrists, relaxed elbows, relaxed arms, into the last part of the network, which is the fingers. The fingers know how they're centered over these clusters. They are, you already know that from blocks. And now you're going to transfer, deliver that arm weight down into your hand, and your hand has already felt the blocks and how that, where you were centered. So, roll into the, this is a lot of arm weight now. However, the leverage of the arm weight down from shoulders, through the elbows, to the forearm, to the ends of the hands, and into the fingers created that big dynamic, not the fingers. The fingers can't do it by themselves. Now, if I want to play softly, I lift the arm weight in the finger staccato. see I just lifted the arm weight um, and that was a finger staccato now sometimes you combine less arm weight with more arm weight like if you make a crescendo let's say I made a crescendo first legato in this two octave scale I start less and I'm going to deliver more arm weight to the top and as I come down I'm going to lift the arm weight so I start less because I want to roll into the, the substance of the scale to the body of it Let's do a crescendo Staccato, you cross the nose, less, and the microphone on the left. But that's the general idea. Um, now, you might have pieces where you need that changed arm weight in a particular phrase. And I'm thinking of Bird Wheeler's um, Arabesque, um, where it has a crescendo and measure. It starts out with Leggiero Light. Uh, the first two measures, and then the next two are a gradual crescendo. The left hand is doing this. Here's where I probably would use my wrist. This forward is a wrist roll forward, a forward wrist roll. Da -da -da -da. Less arm weight. Da -da -da -da. A little bit more. Da -da -da -da. Most. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da so that's an example of combining less arm weight to more arm weight, but sculpting with the wrist. So it's not as, it's not so straightforward as just, okay, I have more arm weight, okay, I have half arm weight, or I have a quarter of arm weight, you still have to sculpt your lines. Now with staccato, we can do the same thing. Here's what we do with staccato. We keep the arm weight, cross our fingers, but we're going to snip the legato that had the maximum arm weight. The ends of my fingers is the variable in the staccato. The arm weight is still there when I do my maximum arm weight. My wrists are still pliant, but the ends of my fingers are snipping off the legato. I'll do it slow. away 
from the note. Uh, because if you start doing this kind of thing, you're going to come away from the piano and lose the centering of your hand. Because we know the centering of your hand on these was well placed doubles and triple blocks. They have to be well placed, of course. So that the sweeping motion toward yourself this does not work. But this works better. The little taps of your fingers. <laughs> are going up so they're rebounding no matter and they're rebounding <laughs> Snipping the ends of my fingers off my arm weight gives me much more of a, uh, a horizontal sense of it, panorama, so you get this. Yeah. You can hear it, it's going horizontal. That's not forearm staccato at all. If it's forearm, it would be delivered like this. the way I think of wrist staccato is grouping more notes with my wrist, grouping more notes, not individual. Although some people teach this kind of thing for wrist. I don't do it that way. I think of, let's say, eight notes under one little group like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. That's wrist staccato. And it gives you a nice sort of uh, groupings of notes that you might want to do. It really comes in handy when you're professionally playing Chopin and you do want some detached notes, but you want to get them nicely contoured. You might group more with a wrist type of uh, uh, detachment. Might not be that clipped for Chopin. You might use some pedal or even with Mendelssohn. So there's a little interlude in the Venetian boat song, Opus 19, number 6 in G minor. And it's after it comes out of a sforzando dominant seven chord, which resolves into the C minor chord, and then he has a series of what he calls staccato notes, but because it's romantic music, you're not going to clip the staccato, but it's good to use the wrist staccato, as I told you. My hands are freezing. I'm going to try my best on this. So I'm going to do it in slow-mo. So he pushes, he resolves down. Now he wants an overall diminuendo, so you have, need more arm weight. You see how I did that? That was all done with the wrist. And I was pedaling each one of them because I don't want it to be snapped. I want it to be lyrical, but I still used my wrist staccato. The staccato is more a... It's more wah-wahs. As verses, finger staccato. Well, I tell students also for my finger staccato, I go a little bit under the key level. I don't go like this. I go a little under the key level because I can hug the keys more. You can see me hugging the keys more. Forearm staccato, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be a little above that because I need the forearm to come. Thank you. 